Welcome everyone. It's hello. Um, it is incredibly nice to meet all of you. It's so nice. We only meet online all the time, so most of you anyway. Some of you I meet physically too. Um, I hope you met all of Fanobad. And um, today is uh, the first time that we're trying to bring together SharpSpring users to tell how they're using the system and how they're trying to achieve their marketing goals. And um, this is uh, very exciting because we want this to be an event where you can meet each other and not just to see how SharpSpring is used, but also to see, uh, because a lot of you here have fantastic services and products, so I think that's another opportunity. I think a lot of you can actually help each other with your services to each other. So that's another one of the purposes of this event. So for that reason, we have um, intermixed this with your presentations and presentations about your solutions mixed with two or three networking breaks, depending on if you count the final one and this one. So uh, we will do presentations and then mix eat and interact and uh, hopefully you'll uh, get to know each other and different solutions that you can do with SharpSpring. So today uh, there are 46 companies um, who are using uh, 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 who are using our services and we're really happy about that. I think probably 20 or so are here, right? Something like that. Um, so I think that it's time to maybe start building some kind of community. So that's, that's something that we're trying to do here. A lot of you have asked for it actually. Can we meet other customers? So yeah, it's great. LinkedIn group. LinkedIn group. Yeah. Yeah, good idea. We should do it. Well, no, we have one. We have one. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> <laughs> it's a process to invite people when we ah, do. The invitations to the group. That's what we should do. Exactly. So, um, because we want you to get to know each other, um, we have uh, composed this slide, which is empty now, but soon it will be full of logos. And everyone in this room who gave us permission to show the logos, we will put on this slide. And um, we tried our best to fit the, everything you do into two words in some cases, and uh, six words maximum in some cases. So if we <laughs> made a mistake somewhere, just raise your hand and tell us what it should say instead. Um, so let's start with Lekab, and we will introduce Lekab a bit soon after this, because this is actually Lekab's offices. Thank you so much, Claire, for offering it. It's great. Um, and um, so you will talk a little bit, if you want, about the SMS, um, maybe. Briefly. Yeah, yeah. So, um, right after this. But Leka basically provides SMS automation, you could say. Something, yeah? Yeah. Konaptu, cloud infrastructure. Yeah, did I get that right? Yeah. So, you will talk. Basically. Yeah, basically. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you want to go to the cloud, if you want your products and your services to be in the cloud in a very safe and secure way, talk to Konaptu. Sell it. Esco, uh, where are you? Yep. There you are. Um, yeah, raise your hand when I when I mention your, uh, so everyone can see. So company communication and telephony is that correct? Yes. <laughs> I would say what we are specialized in is office Microsoft Office 365 telephony. Yeah. Which means Skype for business or Teams for company. Great, great. So to improve your communication, talk to Esco. Kurant, so sjuk från varu management, correct? <laughs> Is that right, Eva? Uh, actually, it's an occupational healthcare with uh, digital tools for, for uh, administration of CQ. Yeah. And bump, yeah. whatever that is called. <laughs> so if you want to improve how you manage VAB internally, yeah. <laughs> definitely talk to Eva. And then we, ha we have Vitra, 
so it was uh, very difficult to fit all of the sentences you sent to us, but I would say... <laughs> I <laughs> so I would say, um, if you want to see where your stuff is and what it's doing, that's what Witra helps you with. Is that correct? Yeah, that's cool. correct. Stripe is soft, Ulf. Um, so eHealth solutions and end-to-end -end development of systems. So actually several of our customers have used Strikersoft to build their products. So if you want to build something great, then talk to Ulf. Med Universe, is Matthias here? No. No, he couldn't come, okay. So um, patient case platform, uh, meaning connecting pharmaceutical and life science companies with doctors in a very unique way. Really cool solution for that industry. So for those of you in uh, working with eHealth, I, I think you, but unfortunately Matthias is not here today, so. Uh, but we will send the information to you with, with all of your permissions um, so you can contact each other later. Social branding group. <laughs> I would say one of our most unique customers, and we will see soon why, because Cheryl will present what we've done with you. Um, if you want to help your employees brand themselves better on social media, talk to Charlotte and the rest of Social Branding. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. Great. Focus on LinkedIn. Yes. Um, <clears throat> Itello, I would go as far as saying, Nils, correct me if I'm wrong here, there you are, that Itello powers much of Sweden and in fact Nordic's bank and insurance industry. Yeah, specifically for life and insurance. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, fantastic solution. Absolutely amazing. <coughs> and Nils will, will actually be on the stage a bit later. Centrum for Nagelsliff's Historia. Uh, let's see where you are. Uh, there you are. And um, we have been, me and Anastasia and Sam have visited you uh, several times for myself. And you have <coughs> a huge like several football fields, large archives of Swedish industry, like uh, products and uh, photos and uh, old documents, really amazing stuff that you save and preserve there. And then you tell stories about this. And in fact, Nils, I think you should speak to Margaret. Right. Yeah. Um, inspire. So I would say, uh, where are you on the... There you are. <laughs> I would say, if you have been in a hotel, now correct me if I'm wrong here, but if you have been in a hotel and you have ordered something from the TV screen, that's probably, or maybe Inspire. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Um, Journey. Oh, it couldn't come, right? Yeah. Uh, Journey provides leadership coaching. So if you want to develop your leadership skills uh, for your leaders in your business, talk to Journey. Hagvalen Sjöman, I've known uh, Malin, Susanne, and later the rest of you, of course, Sam and Marina, for even long before Funnelbud was started. And uh, you are, like, I'm always amazed by the quality that you deliver. I'm really, I'm really always impressed and amazed. It, like, never stops. So thank you for working with us. And then ILT and ELT and Inläsningstjänst, I would say you are actually making Sweden and now actually many countries, where are you? Here. There you are, Maya. And um, you're making things easier for children with learning disabilities. And this is a fantastic solution. You're reaching most, I would say, of Swedish communal. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, really amazing solution. And finally, energy building. Let's see where you are. There you are. So talk to Klaus if uh, you have some kind of relation to, um, to the building industry because energy building makes ventilation much more effective and better for the environment. Am I right? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> great. <laughs> great, so those are the ones who are here today. I hope I didn't miss anyone. No. Okay, good. So Leka, Claire, thank you so much for this location. Do you want to talk a little bit about how our customers could use your SMS services, um, perhaps? Very briefly. Um, <laughs> thanks. 
Yeah, so we work with um, SMS-based communication solutions, um, and really from everything high to low, we have um, customers in all different industries. So um, things like sending out meeting confirmations and reminders via an Outlook integration um, or an incident management solution um, that more and more companies are implementing these days and these times. <laughs> um, but the most exciting thing I think that we're working on now is a Zapier integration so that everyone here who's using FunnelBud or SharpSpring um, can use our SMS solutions, whether it be for marketing or really pretty much anything you can think of. Um, so if you are interested in that integration, feel free to talk to me after this. Um, and I also just wanted to say that we're happy to be able to host because uh, FunnelBud has been a really integral part of our, our marketing. So glad to Great. have you here. Thank you. And a lot, I think, maybe. <laughs> Uh, so anyone thinking about SMS? Charlotte maybe should um, talk to. Yeah. Thinking about it every day. Yeah. <laughs> 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 what are we doing it every day? All right. Good. We are the first in line. <laughs> <laughs> great. Great. All right. So um, and then I want to present, of course, Funnelbud, and um, Sam, Anastasia. You've been with us. From the beginning, amazing. You're basically running FunnelBud now. I'm just talking all the time. <laughs> so, and then uh, uh, Cheryl, you have built some of the amazing solutions that we have. You're going to present uh, what you have done together with Social Branding Group. Uh, Nick, our only project manager who is also a developer. I don't know what we would do without you. Um, Marie. Uh, where are you, Marie? There you are. You arranged all of this, you arranged the trip. I mean, imagine I'm here in Sweden, but Marie actually arranged all the bookings, uh, where you stay, this event, everything. Basically our new marketing person, right? You sent our first new newsletter in two years. <laughs> so, thank you. And then Ahmed, our newest member, uh, just a few months, but uh, you've really shown really great passion and energy in such a quick time, so thank you. And then Yaroslav, where is Yaroslav? There you are. So I would probably say without Yaroslav, every single one of your landing page and email templates would probably look a bit different if, if it wasn't for Yaroslav and his team, so thank you. And then we have two people who couldn't make it today from the front-end team uh, with Yaroslav, Shubham and Uttam, but hopefully they'll come next year, plus four new starters who are currently in training. So this is very exciting. We hope to do this every year, and hopefully it'll be more people uh, from both sides every year. So finally, I want to say um, our job is to help you grow, and don't hesitate. If you see anything here that you get inspired by, don't hesitate to talk to us because we really want to help you grow and that's our job. We've recently kind of found what we would define ourselves as. We, we didn't really have a way to put a word on it before, but I think that this basically describes what we want to be for you. We see ourselves as your marketing technology department. So this is something that is becoming more and more necessary for more and more companies. But very few companies can actually have a full-time marketing, marketing technology officer. So this is the gap that we want to fill. So if you have anything that you want to do, don't hesitate to talk to us because we're not just supporting you with sharp spring. We want to support you with any strategy for marketing technology and with anything that connects with and integrates with marketing technology relating to SharpSpring. So this is the schedule. Uh, where am I on time? Okay, we are at 45, so I should stop now. So we have <laughs> Itello, uh, Niels will present, then we'll have break and networking, then we will have three more presentations from Konapto, Stefan, and uh, Patrick couldn't make it, but you will present Journey and their solution, which is a really cool automated webinar to sales solution. And finally, Charlotte from Social Branding Group plus Cheryl will present what you have done, which is a completely different way of using SharpSpring, not for 
sales, but for delivery, which I think can be very interesting to see because it's so different. With that, Niels, do you want to come up? Absolutely, sure. Great. Thank you so much. So here is uh, the magic thing. paper. Back and forth. You can point here if you want. All right. And then um, Marie there will do this when you have only five minutes. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Bye, right. everyone. Uh, my name is Niels. Uh, I represent half the marketing department of a company called Itel. And uh, I thought I'd share with you how we and why we choose to work with Sharpspring and FunnelBud and how we use it for account-based marketing a method that we're using to get new prospects. Um, here we are, I think it's almost six years ago when I started. We were approximately a hundred people by then and uh, I think by the end of last year we reached 220. So we are growing very, very rapidly. <coughs> And uh, what we do, we are the leading software vendor for the Nordic life insurance companies. And uh, so we provide them with uh, software, uh, solely focused on administration of pensions, life insurance, and long time savings. And we want to streamline the insurance business uh, and savings, enabling higher yields and more security for the money. Essentially, we don't want insurance companies to compete with their IT. Humble bragging numbers, I guess. Um, yeah, 220 um, employees now, growing like crazy. But the um, thing that I myself is quite impressed of is uh, our software. By the mid of 2018, <coughs> Our software held 11.7 million insurance policies, uh, which is then 70 billion euros in contract value. Uh, and that is 50% of all of, of the <laughs> Swedish market. Uh, right, enough of Itello. <laughs> we, uh, maybe a year and a half ago, we decided to work with something called account-based marketing. Uh, I think I were at a seminar when I came across this and it seemed right for us. Essentially, our software uh, only fits these huge companies and they are actually maybe just a handful in each country. So um, we wanted to uh, really target our new potential customers. So for all of you who don't know what it is, I will give you the short version. Uh, traditional marketing, you have an offer that you want to say, you choose your channels to communicate it to, and then to whom? To your segment. And account-based marketing would be almost the other way around. Yeah. Who do we want? In our case, it's the large in <coughs> insurance companies or banks. And what should we say? Well, maybe they are having lots of old systems we could try and, uh, and uh, <coughs> give them a nudge on that pain and where can we find them it might be on events or are they on LinkedIn uh, and I like to the similarity of fishing <coughs> with the net or you go with the more precision tool so when we decided that this was our way to market we ended up with Shopspring I think it's a year ago, a little bit more. Yeah. Maybe January. We probably we were started in January. Running. Yeah. yeah. So we have our let's see if I can get this button right. Yeah. Our well known targeted accounts. Right now we're looking to Norway. I think we're looking at five companies. And uh, we will then try to aim for maybe it's their internal IT and their business and operations and of course their management because it's the management who takes the decision to buy our software and then we will communicate into all our channels be they our own owned channels or bought for and we will try to feed Sharpspring with as much data as possible uh, both <coughs> because we're only maybe looking at a handful of people for this small amount of 
companies and we will need to measure them over a long period of time. We're actually on the, in the process of signing a new customer right now and they have been in our sales <coughs> pipe or we're having meetings with them for 13 years. That's how long it can take for us to, to actually <laughs> sell. Yeah. yeah, so eventually we will get some sort of reading from ShopSpring and my boss, our sales director, will give his happy face. Uh, so how do we use ShopSpring? Um, for us, in order to get the type of data that we wanted, and also in order for us to track this for such a long time, uh, we got the help from Funnelbud to uh, integrate this with Google Docs, which actually is just a live copy of everything in ShopSpring. We wanted this because we could make very detailed reports <coughs> Like I mentioned earlier, we want to reach maybe a handful of people on each department and on each prospect. <coughs> um, moving forward, this was something that Funnelbud helped me with as well. In uh, July last year, uh, we had a very old website. It was on a very old platform and uh, we hosted it ourselves. Uh, with a tremendous lack of maintenance, so we were actually begging for it, something bad to happen, which it actually did in July 2018. Uh, we were hit by a DDoS attack, so the site crashed, and also hacked. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I felt that Funnelbud has had done such a good job with ShopSpring and helping us that way, and I figured that maybe they could help me with this too, which they did. So we had a very, very um, in, in intensive period. We uh, migrated, was it 1,000 pages into a new platform? Or, or Closer to 2,000. 2,000 pages. Including insights, it was over 2,000. 2,000 pages, yeah. And uh, we were able to launch this actually in uh, October already because we launched a new product uh, at a uh, business event and we needed this up and running which we managed so big thanks to all of you in, involved in that <laughs> and uh, well more for us we are currently in the process of just improving content conversion and <coughs> feed our account-based marketing flow any questions the reports that we saw yeah Slider. Was that something that you did in Google Drive, or, or did you, did you actually? We have um, a template made in uh, Excel. Yeah, so it's not in, in Shopify. Oh, no, it's not. no. So that was was the uh, solution that found about helped yeah. me with. Integration with Google. Yeah. Thomas. Nothing else. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes. Hey, Stefan. Uh, where is Stefan? I'm here. There you are. Thank you, thank you for coming today, oh, yeah. Stefan. Thank you. Thank, you. thank you for being a client. And uh, we will give the stage thank to you. Thank you for you. having us. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, stage is yours. Thank roughly. you very much. Uh, usually, we talk to quite a technical audience because we are an IT company working in, in a, quite a niche uh, uh, part of the industry. So, this is going to be a challenge probably to talk to people that are maybe non-IT technical persons, but that's our main target group. So. And you can forget this picture, uh, uh, pretty much, because I, I, I realized on my way here that this is a crappy picture to show for anyone who hasn't really worked in this kind of an industry. But you can, you can look at these, these are data centers. Have you all heard about Facebook and Amazon and building those big, large data centers with a lot of equipment in it, consuming a lot of power? cooling that's us but in a little bit smaller fashion in Stockholm then you have the picture and then you can imagine these sites as hotels but instead of renting out the room we rent out space and instead of having people sleeping in the room the, the companies put their IT equipment in the spaces and then they consume their IT in our data centers instead of having the trouble of building the road so that's then you hopefully you can understand what I'm talking about. 
So basically, all of you could probably be customer stocks, which is a good thing for me. <laughs> <laughs> and then, as, as Josef mentioned, we also obviously have a lot of connectivity stuff and communications going around the circle, between the sites, and obviously also out from the sites through operators and up to the cloud. So we have our own connectivity stuff that you can use to build your own direct cloud connections up to, for example, Amazon Web Services or Azure or whatever, and consume the cloud from our data centers. So that's why we call it a cloud-connected co-location. Yeah, enough about us. This is, yeah, the Swedish co-location player, which is not, maybe, that's quite important, actually, to be honest, because obviously a lot of our main competitors are international companies uh, that have big data centers as well uh, in the Stockholm area. But if you are a company, for example, like a few of our co companies, like Sirius, who is an insurance company, they obviously have some trouble uh, uh, managing data in an international uh, uh, manner. So they could, for example, never put their own applications in a public cloud because it's too business critical. <coughs> and when you have made that decision, then there comes another decision to be made. Okay, is it then okay for me to put my data in a non-Swedish company, even if it's in Sweden? And lots of our customers reflect that, okay, maybe not. So let's put it in a Swedish company with Swedish owners based in Stockholm. So that's why we have quite, quite a lot of banking and, and insurance companies in our portfolio, actually. Softronic is another, another customer who is uh, in one of our customer segments, uh, and they are an IT uh, partner, so they sell, uh, they're a reseller for, for IT solutions. Uh, and they are a competitor to ITLO, I, I assume, uh, from that perspective. So they put their gear in our data centers and then they manage their customers through that data so they don't have to manage their own data centers because that's quite a costly affair to build a data center today so this is basically the, the, the type of customers we have not that many people we're 22 employees at the moment and our revenue is, is approximately 120 million a day so this is probably more interesting from, from, from uh, uh, today's perspective. We are quite a young company and at the same time a very old company because we are, as Conapto, we're only six months old actually. The brand has just been, been out on the market for six months. Uh, but the sites and the brand before Conapto has more than 20 years of, of record in Sweden. Uh, it was a, a Swedish private equity company who bought the Swedish part of a big American company and rebranded it to Conapto. Yeah. So we launched Conapto 1st of October and we bought <coughs> your help beginning of September, I think. Yeah. We had three weeks, I think, to get <laughs> yes. all, all the data out of the American Salesforce system yeah. into SharpSpring building everything up and sending the first email out on the 28th of September. Many that late was, nights for that was, quite, <laughs> <laughs> that was quite a ride, actually. Uh, uh, but we managed it, thanks to you. Uh, so, yeah, contrary to, to, to Itello, we are a very broad company. Pretty much all customers who have more or less some business critical data that they want to manage in a location in Stockholm or nearby Stockholm could be a potential customer to us. <clears throat> so we don't work with account-based marketing from that perspective, even if we think that it comes in a little bit later in our stage. So for us, it's about building and establishing the brand, obviously, six months old, so we need to be out there, we need to make customers aware of us, so that we all, all, always come on the, on the short list whenever, whenever one, someone wants to move their data. And obviously, they don't move data every day. A company who has put their data somewhere probably will do that for at least three to five years. So that's where we need to be whenever they want to, buy, to, to change place for, for data. And obviously from, from me and Amy's perspective, I am my colleague here as well, it's all about converting unknowns to prospects. 
and that's the typical way we have built the system on. Yeah. And then obviously we also have a, a, <coughs> a task to build pride and glory internally, because everything is about content, but the content also needs to be reflected inter internally. So we, I have a, a lot of responsibilities to also drive the, the awareness part uh, internally with Konato. And then we use pretty much traditional marketing from that perspective. <coughs> And when it comes to tools, obviously the website is key for us because that's where we want to land all of our visitors and that's where we want to convert uh, the unknowns to knowns and to prospects. And for that reason we work with SharpSpring and the Funnel Bug to help us with email marketing, with the landing pages, uh, with conversion tools, with everything uh, inside SharpSpring. And then we use social media uh, for distribution, mainly. We buy some uh, space in IT media and stuff as well, but, but social media is the, the key distribution uh, channel for us. And then as, as, as Italo as well, you obviously need to be hooked up with the relevant partners and you need to, to have collaborations uh, whenever you can uh, uh, to be able to meet and, and greet your, your potential customers even in, in, in real life, uh, not only digital. Yeah, I'm done. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> so that's basically us. Uh, so, so if you want a secure Swedish location to put your data in, then come to me. Thank, Thank you. you so much. <laughs>
Uh, and then there is um, a sequ uh, nurturing sequence. And each email contains a call to action. And then if you say yes, if you sign up, uh, then you are excluded from the rest of the emails. Um, yes, so that's, um, that's when it comes to webinar funnel. So if you sign up, then um, next part is free consultation funnel. And this is managed by schedule one, uh, schedule once. Uh, so you can select a time slot for, for which you sign up. Um, and again, landing page, nurturing emails with call to actions. Uh, once you sign up, you, you don't receive any more uh, emails. Um, so, um, okay, and then, um, so at this stage, you become qualified and you are, uh, you are managed in the sales pipeline. Uh, so, we suggested several uh, stages in the sales pipeline. Uh, so, it could be, for example, uh, uh, once they sign up for a free consultation, so that, that could be the entry point, of course. Then, uh, post-consultation nurturing, uh, which would be done uh, by, you know, by uh, communication, smart emails, nurturing emails, um, and then negotiating course details. That would be the next stage. And then, uh, planning the course and the uh, course agreed. So uh, it's like 90% uh, when, you uh, when you are waiting basically for, um, for them to sign the offer. Um, okay, and then once uh, the um, opportunity is closed, then they will get, um, you know, uh, the next uh, stage of the process starts, so upselling. So uh, you, would, uh, mm, you would create a manual list uh, where you would uh, you know, manage the, um, those opportunities who you think would, would be eligible for upselling. Uh, and then uh, once, they, um, uh, uh, once uh, um, you are ready to create an opportunity, you would manage them in, the cons in a separate uh, sales pipeline. Um, so, um, if a, uh, if a lead um, hasn't indicated interest in, you know, they didn't sign up for anything, so you can, all of those leads you can add to email newsletter nurturing list to nurture them further. And uh, we, uh, we think this is, well, th this was, uh, this process was created specifically for journey. Um, and we always work with the customer to make it as specific to them as, as possible. Um, but it, uh, we also thought about how to generalize it. And uh, we've created the, the workflow, we, uh, you know, how to uh, make it also, you know, it can be also applicable for any, you know, other businesses also. So, yeah, I think um, interesting process and I think something uh, you might find helpful for your business. Okay, so basically when we hear um, marketing automation, often you often think of um, the typical marketing process like automating email drips campaign or automating your internal notifications. But Social Branding Group gave us this challenging task to automate what they call the LinkedIn feedback reporting process. So this is their in all this is their own internal process and how they uh, create reports and um, it goes like this so you have you will have a landing page where customers can order the LinkedIn profile review it can be any review it can be an uh, sorry not not any review it, it it's an oral review where customers um, can book an appointment with consultants with, with social branding of consultants or it can be a written review where the report will be sent to the customers via email. So we have already implemented an automation, which we will call now as version one, and they are currently using it for their feedback uh, factory. <laughs> and, um, but Social Branding Group is expanding and they are offering more products and services, uh, such as eBooks, webinars, um, e-courses, and even uh, coaching sessions. So we need to build or update the system and start developing version 2. 
uh, and that is what I'm going to show you right now. Just an overview of the process and how we use Sharp Spring in order to um, implement this automation. So the internal process, this is a creative, another way to use Sharp Spring to automate your internal process that would, re that would otherwise require more assistance. Okay, so this is a sample landing page. Right now, this is just uh, the LinkedIn feedback form. This is where customers uh, can submit their um, request. So, but it can be any form. It can be an order form for ebook. It can be an order form for um, the web app. Sorry, it can be a, a booking form for the coaching sessions or a registration form for their webinars and their e-courses. So the customer will need to fill this out in order to submit their request. And then once an order or once customer orders a request, uh, two things will happen. So first is an opportunity will be created automatically in SharpSpring and then social branding group will receive um, a notification and in the notification uh, is it? Okay. So there's this link, I, I hope you can see it, but this link will uh, direct you to the opportunity. So um, in some cases, you will not normally receive a notification that will direct you to the contact card, but this one, it will um, link you to the opportunity. And then this is the opportunity card, similar to the contact card. So. Um, each customer can request multiple uh, multiple times. So they can request many times and they can order different products. And each time, an opportunity will always be created and it will be associated to the contact or with the contact. So social branding group will be able to see um, that all the products that a person has ordered. Likewise, they will also be able to see all the orders that a product got. So, and then they just need to uh, look into the pipelines. So right now they have four pipe pipelines. I'm not sure if you can see that, but uh, they have oral review for English, Swedish, written review for English and Swedish. And each of these pipeline has their own set of fields and stages which means that you will be able to customize your product. Each product can have its own internal process. Uh, for example, for a social branding group, the order review process is different from the uh, written review process. And also the reporting is different. So, and then they can also, they're, they're also, um, they can also store different information in each of these products. So that's the reason why we decided to use opportunities. Because currently what, what they're doing right now is they do it in the contact manager, which is very limiting. So using opportunities allows us more flexibility. And yes, so and also we can also customize their uh, products. So this is uh, the stages, different stages. So I'm just showing that uh, each product can have different stages. Okay. Um, doing it this way, uh, using opportunities as a way to, in, to represent products, it allows us to streamline the process because each opportunity will be able to, um, because we will be, able, we will be able to create different process for each product. And also, um, it streamlines the process and then social branding group will be able to see how much business each product or how much business they are getting from uh, from different sources, and then they can uh, they also they can also do everything in one place, so they don't need a lot of system. They don't need to use a lot of systems um, for the reporting. We are going to custom build a solution for them, so they will just need to work on the opportunity, and then they can start uh, sending those reports to customers. So basically that concludes my presentation and I hope it gave you insight on what ShopSpring can do and also what we can do for you. So if 
uh, if you get any ideas from this, you know, just let your project manager know, or you can also uh, email me directly. Thank you. And thank you. Thank you. I just have a question. Um, can you talk a little bit about the uh, feedback process and how the consultants actually give the, the feedback to the people through SharpSpring? Okay, um, in the feedback process, I, I don't have this in the slide, but they have different steps. So for the written review, I'm going to just briefly describe the written review first. When an order comes in, then it will show in the pipeline and then social branding group will receive a notification. And then the next step for them is to um, assign this request to a consultant. And then the consultant will create the report. How many consultants? Oh, I have a Like, like about 40 about or so. We were about 15. 15? Yeah. So mm -hmm. they can assign this to a consultant in the... Um, Opportunity card. Let me just mm -hmm. go back to that. There. So this is where they assign it to the consultant. And then the consultant will have to create the report. What we are planning actually is to automatically create this report. So what will happen is they will just have a bunch of fields, like a lot of fields here, that they will use to create the report. And then we will automatically create it. And then once it's done, Another process will come in where they will send this for verification. So they just need to um, uh, change or update something in, in here. Uh, I wasn't able to show it, but they need to update a custom field. And then that will automatically, that's the custom part, the custom development that we are, that we are still building and we will discuss with them. So once they updated that custom field, the report will be created automatically for them, and then it will be sent for verification. And once the report is verified, or for example, the, the person is going to verify, they can choose to give it back to the consultant. For example, the report, they, they feel that's not that complete, so they can give it back to the consultant, or they can reassign it to another consultant. Or they can send it to the customer. So one, So again, here, Something here will allow them to send it to the customer directly, and the customer will receive the report. So that's the the overview of the written review. For the oral re review, it's different because they're not sending reports. So yeah, no, I just wanted to hear the written review, but that that for me was the most interesting bit about this whole setup is how they use it to actually like use SharpSpring to create a deliverable product for customers without anything else. No one that I know of has ever done mm. so it's this very, with it's very, Actually, it's very unique. It's very different. It's not how you will usually use your uh, <laughs> sharp <screen. laughs> But yeah, we somehow made it work. And it's still under <laughs> development, <laughs> but... We're trying to make it work. Yes, I'm trying to make it work. So. No, but we've actually taken about 2,000 people through this already. And we're now moving you know, in, in Sweden, we're moving into Germany, we're going to go international. We're going to have tens of thousands of people in the system. Yusuf? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe, maybe if you all want a little review, you can do yeah. yeah. this. <laughs> and no, yeah. I think you've done a fantastic job. And I mean, we're really trying to create something that no one else has done. Mm. And mm -hmm. uh, so have you. I mean, you're mm -hmm. trying to create something. Yeah. yeah. Was done, so. It's a team effort. Yeah. We're very happy. Thank you. Thank you, Charlotte. And as I've, I, I told Yusuf once, that Sharp Spring is not really a report generating tool, but somehow <laughs> we are trying to make it you know, work for them because mm -hmm. that is their requirement. So. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank Great. you so much. But I don't think I have to at this point. I think I know everyone here now. And everyone knows me. Um, so, yeah, I've been with Funnelbud pretty much from the start, mm. uh, except for Yusuf as a front-end designer. Mm. Uh, at that point, yes, literally three people, and today we are now 14, including trainees. Actually, 15 if we include the second, Dennis. Right. Right. 
Uh, we do also <laughs> outsource uh, graphic design, not that we really advertise it. Um, I'm going to be chatting about a couple of new features from SharpSpring um, and one awesome roadmap item on their end, not ours. <coughs> and then what we've been working on. Uh, oh, let me become visible in our recording for those who cannot attend. Um, then a couple of cool things that we are working on internally. Um, try to bridge the gap between SharpSpring, a platform that is designed to do something very specific, and all of our crazy clients with their specific requirements that... So, uh, yeah, without further ado, let's go in. Uh, so, smart emails now have CC and BCC. Uh, for those of you who don't know what smart emails are, they're essentially a, mostly a sales tool. Uh, we can create a basic template for you with uh, a greeting, some middle bit and the per a specific person's email signature or just merge it in from the user profile. Um, and of course then you can go and do whatever you want with that. Write whatever templates you want uh, that salespeople can then use. Or, as uh, some of our clients, or well, one of them, we recommended just create a mailbox for it. So whenever the salespeople send a really good email, they BCC that mailbox. Uh, from time to time, marketing guys can go in there and see, great, looks good, let's uh, make it nice and snazzy, and create an actual smart email template from that. So uh, then the salespeople can reuse each other's content, or if uh, you feel uh, ambitious enough, let them into the marketing side to do it themselves, maybe not risk it. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that is smart emails. Uh, so now you can CC and BCC other contacts in the system when you're sending them. Um, just a note, in order to do that you do have to turn on email sync, but uh, that also comes with a couple of added benefits, uh, which highly recommended. Even if you are going to have your sales team send any smart emails, you should enable email sync because of that last Ready? Ah, there. First one. Uh, no unsubscribe links. Um, by law, SharpSpring has to include unsubscribe links in all emails sent from the system. But email sync kind of gives them a under the radar way of getting mails out through your actual mailboxes. So unsubscribe link is gone and it literally looks like a normal email sent from Outlook. Uh, so it's a great way for people to get uh, standard responses out. Also include uh, uh, increases delivery rates, and of course with email sync turned on, you're now seeing inbound and outbound mails on the uh, life of the lead or timeline. Um, oh, the, it is available, live. Uh, then new is the activity feed. So you all know the life of the lead, see what individual people are doing, uh, but there's no sort of overall feed of different types of activities all in one place. So you might know visitor ID, we're not really such big fans of that, it tells you what people are doing on the web, but now the activity feed brings in multiple channels or uh, types of activities. So uh, yeah, web visits, forms completed, media views, email opens and clicks, uh, incoming sync mails if someone uh, assigns a contact to a salesperson, see that as well, um, and social interactions. Yeah, Nils? Can that be uh, filtered? Yes, um, and the filters are persistent, so if you don't want to see contact assignment, for example, because for me, not particularly interesting, some might want to see it, yes. Uh, so if you turn it off, it stays off until you re-enable it. Um, then, yeah, I think it's pretty awesome. Uh, you can find it at uh, uh, the top right, if you click the little grey button. And then just next to it, in the same pop-up, is the task manager. 
Um, so, any of you have worked with the sales side of things? Tasks and reminders are nothing new. But now we can see them all in one place. So, uh, you can see your, all of your own tasks for all of your contacts, opportunities. Uh, you can see for other people as well. So, it now becomes a tool for the sales manager as well. Um, Please don't ask us, I have already requested it. Um, <laughs> you can't currently see all people's activities all at once. I've asked them to add it to the filter, so hopefully soon. Uh, this is obviously just literally released, I think, yesterday. <coughs> Very exciting. Um, I can say I've uh, started using Activity Feed in my daily work. Um, basically, I send a smart email. And, uh, you know, while I'm working in the CRM, it pops up a little message saying, oh, this and this contact just opened your email. And I go to the task manager, I click the contact, and then I may call or something. And it has actually helped me reach <laughs> several people that I couldn't reach for a while. So it's really useful, actually. Good. Um, so this, you can filter by uh, time frame. And by assigned person, obviously not everyone. Uh, and then follow up directly from there. Send a smart email, uh, add a note. Uh, you can modify the uh, task itself. So if you don't want to do it now, you can move it to later. Or if you don't want to do it at all, you can assign it to someone else. Um, yeah, that's. I think I'm not going to leave the Q and A till right at the end because. So many things, so please ask. Quick, 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 quick question. If it says available now, will I see this? Is yes, it's in Sharp Spring. Uh, if you click at the top right of the app on so the it's middle. Just there. Yeah, oh. it's just there. Uh, we've had it for, I think, two or three weeks for ourselves, but uh, beta testing. Right, and then. Oh, yes, product automations. So. Big gap for some of you. Um, in opportunities, you can add products to the opportunity and that automatically uh, adjusts the price for the correct, well, for all of the products that are in it. But it's been a little bit tricky because sometimes you want to use that information in your marketing as well. And that has been almost impossible in the past. So, uh, products is now becoming its own entity. And part of that means that we can now use, well not now, sorry, coming soon. Uh, we will be able to use products as filters in our automation workflows and in our lists. Which means that in our lists we can actually build lists of people who don't have certain products. Let's upsell them. Uh, or we can say that people who do have certain products, um, especially tiers. Uh, if someone is on <coughs> tier 1, well, let's move them up to tier 2. We can use that for nurturing now. Um, and we can also use combinations of products, of course. Any logical combination you could think of, we will be able to use that. Same with workflows. So, someone downloads a white paper, they have a certain product, uh, they're now engaging again, so you can upsell them on something that they don't have. So will be really exciting to see that. Also, same combinations of logic and or however you like. Let your creativity go wild. Um, <laughs> questions for this bit? Stefan, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, so will you at the same time develop the, the, the reporting part of, of uh, the, the product? Um, well, this is all sharp springs, so maybe they will. But if they don't, maybe we will. <laughs> <laughs> and that brings us to some other cool and exciting things. Any other questions before I move on, though? Nope. Right. Uh, quick stop at the help portal. Hopefully all of you know this. It's had a very slight revamp, but um, very big impact. Uh, we've moved the navigation literally, we just moved it from the top to the side, and it is 300 times more usable. 
<laughs> um, I've removed the old intro on the homepage. We now have latest articles so that you know what we've added. Um, I try to add at least one or two articles every month. The uh, team also contributes and adds their own. Um, so latest will be on the side and most requested. This is things that people do over and over and over and you know, you've got to follow a set process and you can't quite remember every time how to create a link for your landing page with the UTM code. So one of the prime things over there, how to use the media center and why and so forth. Um, so please, if you're looking for inspiration, help portal. Um, it's not just instructional, it is strategic as well. Uh, Yusuf has written some great things on sort of how to design your sales processes. I've written some articles about that too. Uh, best practices for sales pipelines, super in depth of how and to set it up and all of your options. Lots of stuff. Do you have videos? Uh, yes, some have videos, not all. Um, the trickier ones, we try to make videos because it's honestly a lot easier to explain and show in multiple, like, instead of just taking screenshots, screenshots. So yes, uh, where it is much easier to explain, videos, especially the media center. It uh, can be a bit of a mouthful to write down. Um, I think that's all I wanted to say. I'm not standing by my speaker notes. <laughs> Uh, any questions? No? Yes? Good. Um, so, coming soon, Funnel Bud reports. Uh, as I was saying earlier, ShopSpring is designed for certain very specific things, and we're trying to... Uh, all of our clients here use it for those specific things, but we're trying to sort of expand the scope so that you know, you don't have to go and buy another big tool just to do another little thing with it. So, of uh, our development projects, we're trying to sort of bridge those gaps that are easy to bridge because we don't have a massive development team, we've got Nick. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Nick has his own clients to manage as well, so uh, we really have limited resources there but he's done some amazing things. Um, this is a dashboard. Oh, sorry. Uh, Marlon, sure this makes you very happy. You asked us for this, I think about a, yeah, a year and three months ago. Um, so we now have a summary of subscriber growth. Uh, it's based on lists though. So, you know, we don't like redeveloping things all the time, so we try to make it a little bit more general. So that's subscriber stats, that's actually based on a list. So it's based on a list called all contacts, which means you can get these statistics for any one of your list segments as well. Uh, in the, I think it's, is it version one of the dashboard aspect of the report? Correct me if I'm wrong? Yeah. yeah. Uh, you, well, we to begin with, because our backend is not super pretty yet. Um, we can create these reports on any of your lists. Um, what am I missing there? Oh, yeah, so then we can obviously graph it, because we have all the data. Uh, we're storing it in our database. Uh, for those of you who are worried about GDPR, it's all anonymized. The most specific piece of data we actually store is a contact ID. So there's no personal information, nothing to worry about. Um, Plus the server is in Germany, so... Yeah. Um, then we've got a... Well, yeah, as I said, this dashboard is based off of the uh, raw sort of data, which I'll show you in the next slide. Um, so, yeah. Uh, campaign leads, uh, email sent by funnel, uh, opt-ins per funnel, um, oh, and uh, email sets all in one place. I was putting together this last minute and that's actually meant for the next slide. Uh, so, here we go. So the subscriber stats basically just comes out of a table. 
make it all pretty for you. Um, so we can see number of new contacts, how many subscribes uh, this month, and the difference is subscribers. So there were obviously five unsubscribes this month, and that you see in the last one. Uh, total number of subscribers in the system, well, in the list, um, and total number of unsubscribed. And uh, you'll see there that there's one negative subscription number. Well, you deleted some contacts and kind of went backwards, but that was probably good. You did some cleaning up. Um, then we've got uh, a report that's uh, <coughs> uh, new and existing contacts for opt-ins, uh, but this is more applicable to recurring funnels. So you run a webinar every month and you want to see how many of your existing contacts signed up for the same webinar, how many brand new prospects signed up for a webinar. That's what this shows you. Um, and you can add any number of your webinars to this report. Um, we haven't decided how to make that pretty on a dashboard yet, but it'll probably come. Um, we, as I said, store it all in our database, but we've got a nice thing that can just push any of this to a Google Sheet that we can share with you. So you get the data and do whatever you want with it. Um, and then we've also pulled out all of ShopSpring's email statistics. So instead of looking email by email, you can now see it all in one big table. Um, someone sitting over there requested that. And <laughs> Very good. <Hi> there. <laughs> <laughs> um, their problem was that uh, ESCO wanted to see how effective were their webinar emails over time because they made changes from time to time. Are those changes good or are they bad? Well, now we can see. Uh, did more people click? Did more people open? Or did the stats get worse? How many unsubscribes did we get? Um, so, uh, and also sort of progression of a person's uh, progress through a funnel. Um, uh, some of the filters are missing here, but um, we're aiming to get it so that the emails are actually linked to a funnel. Uh, we don't get that through the API, but we're kind of figuring out a way to get that information elsewhere. And so the aim is that we can actually say, for this funnel, um, what number of drop-offs did we get at each point? And where did we get the actual, the most clicks? So we can order it by the number of the email in the funnel and uh, actually see which emails of that sequence are actually having the most effect. Let's work uh, on the ones that aren't really doing anything. Well, let's scrap them all together. Um, so just another tool to help you with uh, good decision making. So what the actual say is you can do that for funnel and you can do it for all email newsletters. Um, yeah, or right now it's just pulling all email stats. Yeah, all per funnel, as you say. Per yeah, per so it can be funnel emails, it can be newsletter emails, uh -huh. literally any, yeah, all emails, even smart mails if you wanted to. Um, and then, yeah, we pull this on a regular basis, so... Uh, the stats can either be set to update over time, or we can restrict them to a time frame. So, for example, on webinars, uh, we reuse the same email over and over and over. So, instead of looking at uh, instead of looking at the email's full history of statistics, we're just looking at a narrow time frame. So, for this webinar on the twenty fifth of March. You know, how many people from that point onwards to the next webinar actually interacted with that mail? Well, more specifically, from the time it was sent as part of that webinar's flow till the next one. So, a little bit complicated on our end, but we're figuring it out and it's kind of working. We're getting there. Um, when it will be available? Uh, available? Well, a handful of these. Actually, the subscriber report, the top one, yeah. uh, that's basically ready for release, probably if you tell us you want it, we can 
cobble it together in a day or two. Um, the oh, I wasn't prepared for that question, so I don't want to lie here. But uh, the I'm going to not answer for the second report. Uh, the third one, uh, as it is now, tomorrow, um, with filters by funnel. Give us a couple weeks, please. Okay. Um, so the way that we are planning to design it, I don't want to go into too much detail, but it actually pulls that information out of the workflow. Now, SharpSpring doesn't give us that information over the API, so we have a little thing that automatically goes in through the front end and looks at the workflow, sees what it looks like. But anytime SharpSpring changes something, it could break it. So it's a little bit risky for us, but trying to make it a little bit insulated from those types of things. Um, and then the last one is a summary of campaign tag data. Uh, so how many uh, new contacts did you get per uh, campaign tag? Uh, this one, not so needed, but um, it is nice sometimes to see all of your tags all in one place. So that's what that is for. Um, any questions? More questions. Good. Um, and then, Anna, you'll recognize this one. <laughs> um, we are building a quiz creator. Once again, the user interface to create it, not so pretty, so we can do it for you for now. Um, but it is ready, it's live. Um, Feature set limited, so don't ask us for too much. But when we do release the front end for all of you, uh, we're looking at some really, really cool features. So uh, you can do literally anything with this. Multi-step forms. Uh, it came out of a request for a quiz. Um, so you can create an interesting way for your clients to actually tell you more about themselves without having a form with 50 questions so that you can figure out how to market to them. They don't want to give you that information. Make it interesting for them. Um, so you can ask as many questions as you like. Each uh, answer is scored. And then at the end of it, you can uh, either show the score if you want to be that blatant, or you can redirect people to different uh, pages after the quiz based on what their score range was. And we push all of that information, of course, into SharpSpring afterwards. So SharpSpring then gets all of the questions, the people's answers, and the final score. Um, and that means that we can also use the score range in our workflows, segment them. Um, so people's readiness to use your service. Let's uh, find out how ready they are. And based on those answers, we can build them up to the right stage to actually sell to them. Um, so yeah, this is not too pretty, but it's just for the idea. We've got uh, one live, it looks very nice, but I can't talk about it. So <laughs> couldn't put it on the slides. But yeah, think about it. Uh, let your brain work and, and talk to us. Question? Yes. <laughs> Can this be used for like evaluation purposes after the person has bought something or gone um, to a webinar? Yes, yes. Um, because we get the full results, as in the answer to each question, uh, plus the final score. So yeah, absolutely. Developing as we go. Yes. <laughs> Product development is amazing. Good. Um, and then just the last topic. Uh, remember at the beginning, Yusuf said, well, we, we finally figured out you know, how to describe what we are. Um, absolutely right. We want to be your marketing technology department. So when you buy in with FunnelBud, you are buying a project manager, you get regular meetings, we teach you how to use SharpSpring, and we give you strategic advice. But it doesn't have to end there. You know, you can do your marketing much better than we can because you know your business, but 
sometimes you don't always want to learn all the ins and outs. And so that's where, if you want to, you can focus on the content and your strategy and just let us do the heavy lifting for you. So feel free if there's anything, uh, I think Anneli would ver... she left? And she had to leave. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, so one of our clients uh, spent four hours today building 40 rules-based lists. I feel so sorry for her. That's why she left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> um, unfortunately, she didn't have the budget to outsource that to us. It's not the type of thing we want to take from you, but we'll do it begrudgingly. <laughs> uh, but what I'm more talking about is uh, setting up your inbound funnels, uh, creating the workflows, taking your content from a Word document, putting those in emails, and actually just making it all work together. Um, so any of the technical nitty-gritty that you don't really want to have to figure out yourself, feel free to ask us to do for you. Uh, we'll have a conversation, figure out the best way to do it, and just go for it. Uh, one of our clients, uh, I've been trying to get meeting with her, and uh, just keep trying, she never has time, she really wants to get into it, but uh, yeah, she loves sending me things and says, uh, can you build a landing page for me, here's a word doc, like, let me know when it's done. <laughs> uh, and so it works great for her, but uh, completely up to you how far you want to take that, but we're happy to take it on. Uh, any questions? No? Well, very glad to see you all in person. It's awesome having come to Sweden. And uh, yeah, I think I am yeah, done. <laughs>